So now you have the community tab. Have you recently had the community tab activated on your channel? Maybe you've had it for some time, but you just don't know how to use it. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use all the different types of posts there are, show you a few tips, Make sure you stick around to the end because I'm going to give you three best practices for getting the most out of your community posts. Let's hit it. Well, now we've jumped over to the computer. We're going to have a look at where the community tab is and then we're going to dive into the, all the different types of posts there are and how you can uh, avail yourself of their awesomeness. All right, you can have a look on the screen here. I still got the old layout where all my videos in one place. You may have seen that that's getting broken out to videos, shorts, and live streams. Uh, if you go past that, you've got playlists, and then you've got community right here. So I'm gonna click on that and show you my community tab right now. And this is the community tab. What you'll see is I've got some posts here. But first of all, we're going to look at the most basic post of all, which is a text post. And all a text post is, is you typing in some text in the body of the post. So this is a text post. And then that's all it is. You're not adding anything to it. You're not adding an image, a poll, a video, a playlist, anything else. You're not adding any of that. And so all you have to do then is type in your text, click post, and you're done. Now, before we continue to get into all the different types of posts, let's quickly look at the settings for a post visibility you see here we can go to channel members only or public so there's only two options because you can't have an unlisted post because like who's going to read it uh, so you can either go public or to channel members only the other thing you can do is pull down the arrow and actually schedule a post and we'll uh, step through that a little bit later we're going to up it to the next type of post which is an image post an image post is is basically a post where you say something, but you also include an image, or in fact, up to five images, which will appear in a carousel. So I can go here, and now it's asking me for the uh, up to five images. I can drag and drop them on here, or I can go select from computer. It'll pull up something, and I might say I want uh, this one, which is like a square. The interesting thing is it likes that because it's roughly in the dimensions that it likes. I can edit the preview, which if I was in something that was vertical, horizontal, I could pick the part of the frame that I actually wanted to use. In this case, it's a square. It loves that. So I'm gonna cancel that. I'm gonna add another one. Uh, say I use this a thumbnail, which is a wider one. So then I have to edit the preview and then I have to say, well, you know, which part of this do I wanna keep? Probably if I was to post this, I would probably try and keep the rename that fits the frame and do something like that. Then if I have something that might be say portrait, like this screenshot from a mobile device, then if I go edit, I can basically pan it up and down and frame into the part that I want, which I would probably frame the banner profile picture, name and handle. You get the gist of that. And speaking of gists, you can also add GIFs or GIFs. Say it any way you like. Let's pick that one. There we go. And so it's, it's a countdown clock that pops in. So it's a countdown clock GIF. <laughs> so yeah, so you can put GIFs under 16 megabytes and still images. Okay, and then I might say, enjoy my Enjoy my pictures or something as the text. Now when it's scheduled or going live, this is what it's going to look like. Basically, you can have the, yeah, the post, you can have the image, you can have arrows to navigate through the carousel of the images. And it had trouble with the GIF, so I had to remove the GIF or the GIF. And so you can see I can just navigate through all the pictures. So you can present a carousel of pictures, not just a single picture in an image pile. The next type of poll we're gonna do is what we call a text poll. So you can see the option here, add a text poll. So I'm gonna click on that. And here you can put your questions. So like, who is the best YouTube hero? I don't know, who can we put in here? Nick Newman. You can go up to four. Each uh, option can have up to 65 characters. So you can put like a, a short sentence. It's gonna fit within the 65 characters though. Fills up quick. We need one more on here just to show you. Let's go Roberto. 
and then once you post that, and then basically a poll looks like this. And then people can come along and actually click on the one that they want. Sometimes there's a checkbox or radio box, a circle, that you can pick which one you want. Uh, for me, when I come here, I can see the um, percentage of totals of who's winning. So that is a text poll. The next type of post is also a poll, but it's slightly different. It's called an image poll. Again, you can ask a question of your community and instead of just putting text, you can see we can only do 14 characters of text. What we're gonna do is try and convey what we're voting for by picture. So we can upload an image in each one. And then I can reposition images. I can go through and go, I want that one there. You can see I've positioned them, how I want to vote. Optionally, I could put, like I could say that this one was a book. And I don't have to put anything here. I could leave it blank and not put any text and just have them vote purely based on the pictures. And the poll looks something like this. You've got the images, you've got your scores, your percentages. People can come along and pick the one that they want based on what they see, based on the question. The next post we're gonna do, look at, is quite powerful in its own way. It's a video post. So I can click video post and then immediately wants me to pick what video I want to link to. So I could put in, I could do a search and say I want to search something by uh, Nick Nimmin and it's going to show me a bunch of stuff by him or I could go, if I know the URL, I could paste the YouTube URL or if I want to pick one of my own videos, I could go, okay, yeah, let's use one of these. Let's pick my best video of late. Let's go with that one watch and if you want to watch it I'm going to have a card up here and it'll also be linked up in the end screen at the end and in the description below but that's for real that's the video I want to promote again I'm going to not going to post it live and video posts look like this so they come in a, a card that has a thumbnail here the title the channel some of the statistics and the first part of the description of course that is the video post. Now you can see here that I've pretty much covered all these options here on the buttons. But what if I told you there was a secret type of post that doesn't have a button? And you know what it's called? It's called a playlist post. Let me show you how to do a playlist post. Okay, what I'm gonna do is go uh, give it some text as usual. This is a playlist post. Next thing we're gonna need to do is get the post link or the uh, playlist link I should say. So to get the playlist link I'm going to need to uh, find the playlist that I want to link up. The quickest way to do that is probably go to my playlist page. And then when I find the playlist that I want, say I want this shorts tools one. If I just go view full playlist, I'm going to have the share button here. If I click that, I can just copy the URL. Copy. Come back here. Paste the URL in there. Okay, you think, oh, it looks pretty ordinary. Now it is gonna click on that gobbledygook link. But watch what happens when I put, when I post it. It looks a lot like a video post, but you can see here, it's got the clickable link, but it also has the, the playlist card, which is clickable as well. And that will take you to, if you click on it, the uh, playlist page, it'll take you as the viewer is to the playlist page so they can start watching from the first video and keep watching through in the playlist uh, uh, player. So that's a nifty one. Now you saw before how we schedule posts. In fact, we've been scheduling posts throughout the tutorial. So scheduling a post is quite powerful. Consider using that to plan your community posts in advance, maybe for the coming week. And of course, if they're scheduled, like all these ones here, I've got six scheduled posts. If these are scheduled and I wanna change them in any way, or change the time that they're scheduled or delete them or replace them with something else. I can just click the three dots. I have the option to delete or edit. I can go in and edit. If I go in and edit, it will allow me to change the text, change the uh, schedule time. So if you weren't gonna promote that video anymore, you might wanna just delete the post and start again. That might be the way to do that. So they're the things that you can do in regards to scheduling. The other thing to keep in mind when doing a community post is that you can actually tag another creator in it using what's called mentions. Now mentions are probably gonna be superseded by what we, what the YouTube are currently rolling out called handles. 
but it works something like this and I think that's going to work similarly uh, as we move over to handles but say I want to tag uh, myself I could start entering my channel name and then it pulls up an automatic list in fact I'm going to tag my mobile channel you want to check out my mobile channel I want to have a, a link in the card here right now for you that's uh, so where I do content that's like content on this channel but for mobile creators only. So how do I do something in iMovie or or how do I do something in the you strictly in the YouTube app? Although I do a lot of my shorts content here on the main channel. But here I've tagged somebody. I can tag uh, somebody else. Brian G. Johnson, he's already there. So it's type in Brian, he's the third one down. It's obviously gonna look at people who you might be following or subscribe to first and favor those necessarily. So I'm tagging these people. Now when I publish this, what happens is because I've mentioned them, it'll show up in that person's mentions list, which is in the studio, sort of in the comment section. You can look at comments, you can look at mentions. I believe the handles is gonna work similarly once that rolls out and takes over from mentions. But for now, we've got mentions, so I can mention anybody who has a channel on YouTube pretty much. Before we get to the best practices, Here's a tip to whet your appetite. Make sure to reply to and interact with comments on your posts. It's a super powerful way to increase engagement and to get your posts seen by more people. Remember that YouTube not only shows your posts to subscribers in their sub feed on mobile devices, it also shows and features posts to people who are not subscribed, but whom YouTube thinks is a good fit for your content. You can do the same things with your community post comments as you can do with video comments. You can harder comment, you can pin comments, and they can be moderated in exactly the same way. YouTube shows community post comments in your combined channel comment section in your studio dashboard. All right, time for those three best practices. Number one, post multiple times a week, at least two to three times a week, but no more than daily. You wanna make sure that you stay front of mind without being overbearing. So keep that in mind. Number two, use polls to generate engagement. Polls are the most powerful of all the posts so far. So use them in a healthy mix of other posts to generate engagement on your channel and on your posts. With that being said, the next point is to not just use posts to share videos, but get a good mix of polls, image, and text posts, but only do the occasional video share. Make it mean something to your viewers. The exception to the rule is if you're sharing somebody else's video, which leads us to the bonus tip. Bet you didn't see that coming. My bonus tip I like to call the tab collab, and that is to use your community tab to collaborate with other creators. Get with other like-minded creators in your niche to collaborate on a series of videos, one on each channel. When you roll them out, each creator uses their community tab to share the newly released video in the series. Rinse and repeat until everybody's videos has gone live. Another way to do this would be to just to share impactful videos in your niche from other creators. If you regularly converse with them, you can informally agree to share each other's content when someone drops a hero or tentpole video. Let your imagine run wild. If you happen to have just gotten your community tab recently and you don't know why, then I explain it in this video here. So if you want to click through and check that out, make sure you do. This is Doug, and I'll catch you later. Subscribe to Doug Hughes and YT for more tech for content creation.